Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Are you having fun so far? Because this is the end. Yeah? All right. All right. OK, so I have a uh, story to tell you. They told me when I came up here to give the story of my life, the presentation of my life. So I took it literally. So I'm going to start with when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I had a friend named Petros. And this guy, he was really good at chess. OK. But he would fall asleep when we would play. <laughs> he was that good. I was boring to him, right? In fact, one day, he invited me to his place. He made some sandwiches. He brought out the chessboard. And he said, OK, let's play a little bit, you know? We played a few games. Then around the third game, he fell asleep. <laughs> he closed his eyes. So I'm like, dude, are you sleeping right now? He's like, no, 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 I'm just playing some voir chess, which means blindfold chess. He didn't have any blindfold. That would be too kinky, I guess, for two like, you know, high school boys. <laughs> so, so he's like, I'm just, you know, I'm like, no, you're just faking this. You can't pl possibly, pl you know, you're just asleep. So he turns around with his back to the board and to me, closes his eyes, and he proceeds to beat me. I don't even know how he did that, right? I mean, how did he know where all the pieces were on the chessboard? He couldn't see anything. So that made me sad. <laughs> that made me very sad. Because there I thought, I thought I was smart, smart enough, right? But he was kicking my butt. I mean, he was my classmate. He was a grandmaster in chess, and it was just like a Tuesday for him. Anyways. In that moment of despair, I realized that I needed to do something, right? And then this really bad idea came to my mind. <laughs> I would spend the rest of my life trying to find a way to beat Petros at chess. Oh. <laughs> so in order for me to do that, I realized I needed to build this super powerful computer, more powerful than anything that ever existed before, right? Because Petros obviously could calculate about 2 million moves per second. So I need to make something that made 2 million and 1 moves per second. <laughs> That's it, right? Simple idea. But I need to come to Caltech to do that. And I couldn't just go from high school just to Caltech. I, I don't think I was that good. Not like you guys. So I went to the Math Olympics instead. Yeah, I know. Brilliant idea. It was so much fun. Not really. <laughs> so you guys know about mathletes? You've ever been to this, one of these math competitions? Yeah? OK. So think of mathletes on steroids, all right? <laughs> That's what this was. Crazy kids. It was a lot of fun, though. I mean, you get to meet kids from all over the world. I had my first kiss in Argentina. That's right, when I was there. Beautiful woman. <laughs> Anyways, so after the Olympics, I thought, well, OK, now I have a better chance. But I can't really go to Caltech yet. I'm going to go to the second best institute of technology in the world. So I went to MIT. <laughs> right? I know. And it's true what they say about drinking from a fire hose. But a friend of mine put it better. I mean, it was an incredible experience. The things I learned there, math, physics, computer science, crazy friendships. But the friend said, after we graduated, you know, at MIT, they weren't really trying to kill us for these four years. They were just trying to send us to a better place. <laughs> it's true, right? So this better place for me was still not Caltech. It was in beautiful California, and it was at UC Davis. Oh. That's right. I know you've seen this before. So this is really an incredible place. Amazing students, professors that really care about what they teach you, right? And then sometimes the occasional crazy police officer. <laughs> but I needed to, to find a way to let Caltech that I existed, right? This was just my PhD right now I was finishing. I needed to, to come to Caltech at least to visit, to see if I could make an impression, right? So I decided to steal a cannon. 
That's right. <laughs> um, I checked the statute of limitations has expired last year because uh, this is an illegal thing and you should never do this, okay? <laughs> it is, I think, considered interstate uh, transport of weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> and we weren't able to hide it very well on the truck that we had. So anyways, um, I went there, but of course I couldn't tell Caltech that it just stole your cannon, which is, by the way, just outside. So I ended up going to Los Alamos, which is in the middle of nowhere, but it's a beautiful place up in the mountains. And I decided in order to catch Caltech's attention, I needed to solve a really hard problem. And so I did. I solved what is called a millennium problem in mathematics and physics. This is, in fact, about right. 0.001% of the proof looks like this. And so I went to this man who opened this TEDx youth event. And I told him, hey, I just solved this amazing problem. Can I come and give a talk at Caltech? He's like, what else do you got? <laughs> I'm like, I just solved number two from the list. He's like, yeah, next one. And in fact, I had something. And I presented that. And he's like, come on over. Right? They gave me a small room next to the bathroom. I just put you there. You do some great stuff. In fact, the amazing thing is that I was able to go to this place within Caltech. And this is one of the premier institutes for quantum information, which means the mecca for quantum computers. If I were ever to build a computer powerful enough to beat Petros, that would be the place, <laughs> right? I hit the jackpot. So last week, I get a phone call, unknown number, right? And I'm like, hello, who is this? He's like, hey, Spears, this is Petro. I'm like, I haven't talked to him in years, right? How are you doing? I'm like, I'm just chilling, I'm not doing much. He's like, oh, yeah? I thought you were at Caltech. Like, yeah, I'm not doing really anything interesting there. I'm trying to keep him off my scent, right? <laughs> and he's like, well, I, on the other hand, have been building a computer that runs on rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> How am I supposed to beat that? I mean, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I should have known the guy was a chess master. He would always be a, a move ahead of me, right? <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Anyways, I got pretty depressed, right? So I thought, well, this is over. It's been 16 years of my life. It was fun. You know, I met interesting people, but I can never beat him. Until I realized that the only thing more powerful than rainbow unicorns <laughs> is all of you guys. So, I'm going to need a beautiful young lady to come up here on stage. Yes? I'm not sure about you. <laughs> Let's see. Right there. Come up here. Right you. Which one? Both of you. <laughs> hey. All right. Hi. Your name? Adrian. It's Paul here. Right. I'm going to try to do something very hard. Okay. I'm going to try to play some volleyball. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> If we can do this right, because this is the only thing I'm good at outside of like <laughs> quantum mechanics, maybe we can beat Petrus, right? All right, let's try. Woo! <laughs> hmm, I don't think this is going to work very well. How about we all stand up? All right, just a few more seconds here. Look underneath of your seat. There should be a dot, either white or red, okay? Whatever that color is, keep it in mind, and let's release the Kraken. <laughs> All right. I want you to get a ball of the right color and hold it. Oh, this is not going to work. <laughs> there you go. Grab a ball of the right color underneath your seat and hold it. 
If you have a red ball, hold it. One each. That's right. Look underneath your seat and see if it is the right color. Keep bringing the balls over. I want everyone here to have a ball either white or red. Look at the ball that you have in front of you. OK. <laughs> look at the color of the ball. All right. And look underneath your seats to see if it matches the same color. If it doesn't, if it doesn't exchange with someone else. All right. Take your time. We can make this work. <laughs> and then once you have the right ball, go and sit and hold it up. Once you have the right ball, sit on your seat and hold it up. If we have done this right, it should spell check M8. Checkmate, Petro. Thank you.